Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, we're going to be going over the stroke methods for the texture brushes in Blender. Now, by default, we're used to a space stroke method, super low spacing, and no jitter. But we're going to go through all of these options, so just kind of bear with me. So for the space brush, this is what we're used to. It just kind of draws there. If we were to increase the spacing to, say, 200% as we draw, you can see that now it's just placing dots when we get to that. Let's move this down a little bit, maybe make it 60%. And you can see that instead of keeping it at a low spacing, it's saying 60% of our cursor, we're going to place another dot of color there. So we'll drop that back down to 10. And then we can see the jitter option. Now the jitter is basically going to apply the stroke randomly as we place around. And so you can see it's just placing dots of color as I draw my stroke in a random pattern uh, around my cursor. And the more jitter you have, the further away from the center of your brush will that dot appear. Then we also have smooth stroke. And smooth stroke is actually going to delay it so that the stroke comes out really smooth and it's really helpful for painting things very accurately if you don't have a steady hand or if, like for me with the tutorial videos, you're painting with a mouse. Highly recommend getting a drawing tablet of some sort for texturing. It's a lot easier than painting with a mouse, but some of my students prefer to paint with a mouse because they're masochists. So that's the space method. We also have the smooth stroke. There you can increase the distance it's going to wait, or you can make it significantly smaller and this is just in pixel sizes, so that's up to you. There's also a factor for how smooth it's going to, to be as we paint that around, so you can play around with that, but that's the smooth stroke option. So that's all of the default options for the stroke method for space. We're gonna talk about the rest of these, but just know that spacing, jitter, and smooth stroke works pretty much the same way for all of the other stroke methods. All right, so we've talked about space. Let's talk now about uh, dots. So dots is just going to allow you to drop dots wherever you want. However, if you click and drag, it will kind of look like space a little bit because of how close it's actually putting those dots together. Uh, if you were to increase the jitter, you would see that it actually is placing dots. But um, if you do it really close together, you're just going to get basically the space thing. Then we have drag dot, which is particularly fun because it allows you to add a dot of color in and then place it exactly where you want it. So if we add that piece of color to the middle of the face, we can actually drag it and drop it accurately onto the eyeball where we want it. So that's drag dot. We do have a jitter option though, and I'm not sure what jitter does with drag dot because it does appear to just place it anyway so it doesn't look like jitter does anything on that one we then have airbrush which is very much like an airbrush in that if we start with a low strength it will actually just continue to build up in that particular area so actually we'll even start lower and it will build up over time as we continue to click and hold now there is a rate here and so this is actually the time between paints. So the higher up you go, the longer it will take for that airbrush effect to get there. Whereas if we make this all the way down to 0 0.0, it's basically filling up the area as fast as physically possible. There is again a jitter function here, which is going to kind of apply the airbrush randomly around and just try to build as it goes but this, using a jitter with this kind of defeats the purpose of the airbrush. Then we have anchored. Anchored is pretty fun. Let's actually go to a red here. And what anchored allows you to do is click, and then as you drag away, it actually increases the size of the area of effect for that brush. It doesn't change the strength, but it will allow you to say, you know what, I want this entire area to be red, or I want this entire area to be red. And so that's what the anchored brush does. You can do edge to edge, will also uh, basically build instead of from the center, allow you to place the anchor point um, from where you first selected to where you do your second selection. So that's kind of cool. Then we have the line brush. The line brush is pretty basic. It just allows you to draw a line and it will be a straight line for uh, a texture. So whenever you draw it, it's just going to draw a straight line for you. 
And then again, you have uh, spacing and jitter, which will change how smooth the line is and then any randomness along the line. All right, the last one I can talk about is the curve brush. So we're gonna talk about that now. All right, so I've gone ahead and cleared off the monkey head again just to talk about the curve method here. Now the curve method allows you to add in a paint curve and you can add in little nodes by holding control and right clicking. Now when you control and right click, it'll actually allow you to build the node and it's important that you drag away a little bit just to get the handles to appear. If you don't, they'll stay right on top of each other and then it'll be nearly impossible to move, well, Actually, uh, it appears to have gotten a lot better since Blender 2.9. So that's actually a pretty good way of doing things, but you still want to pull it away just a little bit to affect the actual curve itself. And then uh, you go from there and you can add in new curve pieces. And I'm trying to grab the square around that curve, but it does not appear to work. So, so when you do add a new curve, make sure that you drag out a little bit. Uh, it is a little bit easier than 2.79 to grab it, but it's no guarantee that it's actually going to work the way that you want it to. And as you can see, I cannot grab this. But you manipulate the curve itself using the right click and not the left click. And then you can use the handles to change the way that the curve is actually going to be generated. And then once you have positioned the curve in the direction that you want it to go, simply left click and it will paint the curve with the color and the strength that you have selected. And then you can shift over and the curve will now get applied. And so we could make this monkey more like a trash panda. Now you can change and add new curves in and then choose them from a drop-down list if you have particular curves and styles that you want. Uh, you can also draw a curve going up here rather than just hitting the enter key or just left clicking. So those things are up to you. If you want to delete a node, simply select the node and hit the X button and that will delete the curve node for you. But again, make sure you're getting your, your handles when you add these things in. All right, that concludes all of our stroke method options and stroke settings. Hope that's been informative for you. I'm Sir Pinkbeard and I will see you in the next video where we talk about the curve settings.